Hello and welcome to another edition of Here's the Pitch. I'm your YouTube friend Brad and this is sponsored by Masses Restaurants in St. Louis. Five locations, stlmasses.com is their website. Go there if you're driving through St. Louis and you're looking for some good Italian food. And they're also looking for people to work because no one's working these days. So go over there if you need a job. Masses is the restaurant. They're my sponsor and I thank them very much. We continue our series of finding reality television greats. You know, we've hit the real worlders. We're going to have some big brother folks. But today, maybe the biggest name in Survivor history, Johnny Fairplay over there. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It's Johnny Fairplay. I, I would agree with one of the biggest. <laughs> I think you are. I think you are. the No, I mean, who knows? There's many big names. But I think when you say Johnny Fairplay, everyone knows that, that you are from Survivor and people still talk about you to this day. So thank you for joining me. Um, I actually <laughs> watched your episode again. It's so funny. Um, so we'll look back at that, but, uh, you're, you're, uh, obviously you're doing a, you're doing a podcast now. You've been doing it since September. It's called, uh, reality NSFW. Uh, so you can so September for, uh, 2017, right? Yeah. Three years ago. <laughs> yeah. No, tw- or four, four. four. Am I on four now? It said September of 2017 was your first episode. So you've been doing that okay. almost 500 ep. Well, not 500, but about 450 episodes. That's a lot. Yeah. It feels like it. <laughs> I appreciate doing this. This is one of the few podcasts I do without notes. So, uh, I have, I have a Patreon and we do a weekly Q and A. So I get to do that one note free, but I mean, like on the Patreon, we're covering Australian Survivor from 2018. So when I watch the show, I'm, I'm making notes. Uh, we're covering uh, uh, the challenge, Spies, Lies, and Allies, the current season on MTV every Thursday. Every Monday, we're doing the challenge, All Star 2, uh, streaming on Paramount+. Plus. And so I have notes for that. Tonight, I'll be watching Survivor. Well, I guess this airs on Monday, but <laughs> but uh, when I watch Survivor, I take notes to the podcast right after. So, uh, so yeah, this one's a little easier. I got, you know, I, I can relax. I can just just uh, riff, have fun. So, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fun change. So anyone can go, obviously, and listen to Johnny and his, his crew over there talk about Survivor this season, but... I watch. I still watch. I'm hooked. But I, I got to say, boy, they're losing me. Um, you know, too many, too many idols, too many chat, too many advantages, too much, too much. I mean, it just I, I can't I can't keep track of what's going on. And that that's I'm a fan. I like the show. And if you can't keep me interested in watching and knowing what the hell's going on, how are you going to get new people? Well, I don't. Uh, so it hit me two episodes ago. Uh, we did uh, we did a 90 minute breakdown of the episode two weeks ago. Because it, it really hit home for me. So I look through the lens, even when I was out there filming Survivor Pro Islands, I look through the lens of production and television, not necessarily just just survivor or surviving or or you know, just just uh just regular interaction. I I I have a different lens that that I see the game through. And uh it, it hit me two episodes ago that like, so when I was on Pro Islands, I had, for my finale, I think I had 35 million viewers. You know, um, Survivor Season 41, they're averaging, what, 6 million viewers. But, uh, you know, after the fact, it's available on Paramount+. Plus, and then as we're seeing, a couple seasons are dropping uh, uh, every uh, every six months on Netflix. Uh, last Monday, uh, Survivor Micronesia, my second season, dropped. And I think that season 41, you had Shan say, drop the four, you know, keep the one. This is a new dawn in Survivor. And not only is it new in that it's 26 days versus 39 days, it's also new in, I think, the presentation and production of it. And it's, I don't feel that it's made for weekly, regular viewer consumption in which it was in the past. So because you, you look at seasons one through 40, and there's always that one little clue or, you know, an extra 15 seconds to, to five minutes that kind of gives you the smoking gun so that you as a viewer with your family can watch. And you have that clue there. You go, oh, Tiffany's getting voted out tonight. Whereas I think season 41 is the first season production wise is made to binge. And they're just telling broad stroke stories that like it, it's it's. I mean, you know, Tiffany seems like a nice person. I look forward to meeting her, but I don't care about Tiffany. And if you're binging this show, you're not going to care about Tiffany. 
So why waste that 15 seconds to five minutes to give that to, to show that smoking gun when that's not a vital part of the story? So I so I think if you're watching it weekly, episodically, as we as most of us have, you know, for 20 years, you're just like, hey, this isn't my show. But I think if you if you were not watching it weekly, episodically, and you were to binge and 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 just go into this sight unseen when the season's over, if this were to drop on a Netflix and you were to binge it over a weekend, I think the story would 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 be presented much. It'd be a lot more palatable to you as a viewer. Well, it's funny. You, 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 I was in TV production my whole life. I still love it. I still work in it. I freelance. So that's how I watch as well. And I always wonder about different things. And that's why I want to have you on because I'm going to ask you a lot of behind the scenes questions. But this season, you're right. What I've noticed, and I don't, I get offended that I'm getting backstory and these flashbacks of these people at their house or their family or Jeff Probst. Tell, I don't, I, I don't want to. You, I don't want to like these people. The whole point of the show is not to like the people. You want them to backstab and do things that are underhanded to win the show, but then win the people over at the end. So I don't need all this other stuff. And I, I don't know if that is maybe what you're referencing, but there's always these little moments where we get to see them back at home, and I don't care. I want. I want like you. I want. Show me where where I missed. How did I miss that? They just told me they were going to vote her out, and I didn't know. But that's just yeah. me. So, uh, I mean, as far as – I love the backstory stuff. Like, you know, I'm watching, as I said, on my Patreon at adfreensfw.com. We're watching Australian Survivor, and they do a lot. I mean, you know, they'll be 10 episodes in and, and do a flashback to, to someone's house. I like that. So I don't like Jeff going, hey, here's what you don't know. It's just like, okay, okay if you need to tell us, then there's a flaw in what you're doing. I don't need you to tell me anything. So, and I, I personally don't like referencing the show itself as a show, you know, like, uh, I did an episode, uh, Pawn Stars and you go to Pawn Stars and, uh, they're not television characters. You're not, you're not part of a television show. You're there to pawn an item and you're, you're going to a store and you're dealing with someone that works at that store. You're not referencing the show in any capacity. And I don't like a uh, survivor reference as a show either. Well, I think it started right at the beginning of this year with the whole "come on, come on in, guys," and then having to have this big conversation about it. I'm fine with having well, I'm fine with having well, these yeah. conversations on like MSNBC, or, but just just let's have some fun and, and just keep all that other stuff out of it. I know it's part of the game and it happens, but literally throwing it in your face within the first ten seconds of the show, I I was a little pissed. But what happened with that wasn't even really what happened. I mean, because like I've, I've spoken with Ricard and they they asked them. And they asked everyone if they had a problem with coming in, guys, and no one had a problem. And then they went back to their island and they they pulled each uh, they they pulled Ricard aside and they said, "You really didn't have a problem with coming in, guys?" He goes, "Nope. Use the, use the term all the time." He goes, "Do you think, as a representative married to a trans person, that uh, that that they would have a problem?" He goes, "Yes, my trans husband does have a problem with the term, guys. However, I don't, and I think my trans husband would prefer that I just care about the game of Survivor and not care about stuff like that because that's not what I came here to do." And it's just like, well, but I mean, but you know, as a representative of someone who is married to, and he's just like, I guess, I mean, but I really don't care. And then they pulled and, and, but, and, and Ricard had, had, had mentioned that to the rest of his tribe. And so they pulled the rest of his tribe, uh, for, uh, confessionals. They're like, Hey, don't you think Ricard being a representative of someone married to a trans person have a problem? They're like, I guess. I mean, I don't think he really, he said he didn't care. It's just like, well, don't you think you should bring it up and maybe, you know, talk about it? So then they have this whole big thing. And he's like, Oh God, I guess I, I guess I'll say something, but he didn't care. Well, it, showed, it almost showed when they did the when he when they went out to him and he, he's like, uh, okay, get me, whatever. Yeah. So so then you know, Ricard gets all this hate on social media, you know, and he and he's just like, look, I didn't I didn't have a problem. I still really don't have a problem. <laughs> so and they used me as a sacrificial lamb. And and if they really wanted to do this, they should have just done it. And I I think Jeff should have just owned it. And instead of you know pretending that there's a monster on the season, which I still haven't seen. There's no Godzilla. And instead of talking about a stupid monster, that should have been, you know, because he's always looking for something to talk about in these pregame interviews instead of saying, you know, it's Survivor. I mean, you've seen it for 40 seasons. It's, you know, it's Survivor. You know. So for if he really wanted a talking point, the talking point should have said, we made a conscious decision on our own to change, come on in, guys, to come on in. And, and, and just own it himself. 
I'm curious because I've always liked Probst. I think he's really good at what he does. I think he's amazing. He's I, amazing. Because all right, so Probst. When we filmed Pro Islands, did not like me. I mean, like we we we, we butted heads a lot. It was fun. I mean, like I I enjoyed the the rivalry, and and I, I think Jeff to some extent did as well. So, but uh, but Jeff, you know, when he does the come on in, guys, today's challenge, blah 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 blah, blah, blah and then you're sitting there afterwards, like Scooby Doo, you know, like you know what? And you know, he never flubbed a line. 30, 30, 38 days that I was out there, never never flubbed a line was was absolutely amazing. And fast forward, I did Celebrity Fear Factor, and you have Joe Rogan, who I who I love, <laughs> and uh, we did get along the entire time. And and Joe would do it. Joe came out there; he has this earpiece. He goes, "Today's stunt. You're going to go around." He goes, "Cut and paste. That's what you get paid for. Cut and paste. Put it together." And I was like, "Wowzers! Night and day." <laughs> what, but I was going to ask about Probes was because was, we're talking about this come on in guy still. And I'm just curious if he if you think this is sort of, you know, he's a producer. He's an executive producer on this show. He has a lot of, of, of sway now that he's been there 41 years. Is he is and I, I know that people hate the, the term woke and it might even be over. But is he really this incredibly uh, thoughtful and wanting to be that way? Or is it uh, possible other people that are kind of telling him to be this way in, in your opinion of, of what you've seen of him? My guess is I, I I think he likes those woke moments or or uh, uh, beyond the game moments. I, I I think he embraces those. I, I think I mean he's a good dude in real life. I mean as I said, you know we we have our problems, but you know there there's like I don't I think he's a he's a he's a good human being, and and I think uh, I think he has great intentions. And I, I think a lot of that stuff is just you know his intentions to 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 go to do something bigger than 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 a, a stupid reality competition show. So how is your relationship today with Mr. Probst? You guys uh sending Christmas cards? Do you get a chance to talk to him at all? Or are you guys still uh you're not, not we, big we, we we uh we're cool. I, I send him a Christmas card every year. Oh that's good. Does he send one back? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't stop me. <laughs> No, I, I just, I do. I think he's, I think he's good. Would you, do you, have you been invited back at all since uh, season 16? I mean, there's been a lot of all-star seasons. Has it ever been asked of you to come back or is that? Those- Se- season 40 was initially legends and probes fault for legends. And it was actually CBS, not probes that, that switched it to uh, winners. And uh, I was the first phone call. Then you didn't go. What happened? Because they switched it to winners. Oh, that's right. You did. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> second place right second place was that third place third, third my first time. so i mean you had that amazing i think is that the first time in reality tv we have someone really becoming a villain i i'm, I'm i watched now i gotta be i gotta be honest about survivor i watched i think the first three seasons kind of took off the next few i didn't see your season live watched it back because I, I heard about it. And then, then I think I got back in because of what you did. Was that the first sort of moment where we had um, a, a kind of a gameplay? Because it wasn't so ruthless. This is 2003. It's season six. People know the game and people know you have to do a little bit of lying. I'm thinking about Big Brother. I mean, Big Brother had been on maybe five, six seasons, but I don't remember just a crazy, unbelievable lie. And if, if people don't know, it, then don't, you shouldn't be watching. But he talked about, he had a grandmother who <laughs> he said that uh, had died and won him a challenge. I, he can, you can Google that. If you haven't seen that, then you, you probably shouldn't be watching this whole thing. But did you know, had that been done on TV? Was that the first time we had like a real villainous moment? I, I'm the first self-professed villain. Um, I think some people saw Richard Hatch as a villain. He never saw himself as a villain. He was like, yeah, it was the edit. I wasn't really like that. Uh, Jerry Manthe, she was the first okay. villain. She was a villain. <laughs> uh, she once again does not, did, did not, does not consider herself a villain, does not embrace the role, you know, says it was a bad edit. Um, Puck did not consider himself a villain. Um, yeah, but uh, I, it's right. not, I guess, villain versus being someone who really underhandedly did something so incredibly uh, lying. I mean, the lying, because like, I guess... Well, no, but I went in, I, I said day one, I want to be the biggest villain in the history of reality television, not just Survivor, just ever. And the like, production, they're, they're figuratively masturbating. They're like, holy moly, this guy wants to be the bad guy. It never happened before in reality television. So, and it changed reality television forever. And I apologize for the Kardashians that 
if I had known, I'd, you know, I'd make a time machine, go back and not do it. I, did, I had no idea that would be a. <laughs> right. Every bachelor, we always have to have one bad bachelor who's an actor, I'm sure from LA. And, but you were the real, sure. you were kind of the real deal. Only, although though you were sort of act because that wasn't really who Johnny, you're Johnny Dalton in real life, right? So Johnny Fairplay. No, Johnny Fairplay. My name has been legally John, Johnny Fairplay since 2012. And Santa Claus has been sending me presents before that. My daughter was legally Piper Fairplay in 2008. But you're not a real villain in real life, are you? Are you are you a bad guy in real life? Depends on the depends on the moment, and the day, and, and what's going on. I mean, I you know I, I feel I'm a great dad. I'm an amazing friend. But like, I mean, I dislike most people. Yeah. We, we, we talked. Ever been to Walmart? You ever been to Walmart? Bad place. Yeah. Very bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just taking a drive down the street, I, I have to yell at a few people left and right. Guy was on the phone today, just cut me off. I just just happened just now. As, as, as I was texting you, hey, I might be a little late. The guy on the phone is, is it was my problem. Um, we talked about production. I, I know. Again, I love the behind the scenes stuff. There's so many podcasts that talk about this, but I just when I watch the show, I know this is probably you know Survivor 101. So I'm sure this has been covered a million times, but. When someone finds an idol and the camera's with them, I'm always in the back of my head going, and I totally understand. This is hours upon hours of, of footage, but it always seems so crazy that there's a camera there every time someone gets an idol. Can you talk about just your time there? I don't think there was idols at that point uh, in season we not, We did not, but we had something similar. And once again, I, I looking through the lens of production, kind of figured out how to manipulate it. And, and I've had conversations with Russell Hans, uh since, and he, he essentially did the same thing. So like on Pearl Islands, we had a uh, buried treasure. And every time you won a reward, you got one third of the treasure map. So we finally got all three pieces of the treasure map and it showed us where the treasure was, but it was still kind of vague. Like it, it said, there was this like fort tree and Production felt it was much more of a fort tree than we did. <laughs> like it was just like, oh, that's a stretch. So, but we still knew, you know, just based on the map and proximity to other other uh, reference points, we we had a guesstimate of where this quote unquote fort tree was. So, um, we had we had Sean who was uh, who was a bit arrogant out there and. I didn't hit, I didn't envision his edit being extremely positive or not necessarily positive. Just, I didn't, I didn't, didn't imagine it being that good. I, I, I felt like they might uh, zero in on like the, the overconfidence and maybe a bit of a dumbass edit <laughs> is kind of where I envisioned it. And I wasn't incorrect. <laughs> and, and so uh, uh, Sean, uh, he was lazy around camp. He wouldn't, he wouldn't do much. And I was just like, I was like, I go, Sean, I'm like, can you do one thing for the tribe here? Just one thing. I mean, I, I think we're on day like 16. I'm just like, you haven't done anything in 16, can, in 16 days. Can you just do one thing for the tribe? And he goes, maybe. And, <laughs> like, not even yes. You know, I'm just, you know, it, which sums up everything. And I go, Sean, I need you to stand right over here by this tree, which I knew was the wrong tree. I was like, I need you to stand right by this tree and, and with the shovel and go, I know this is the tree. I know we're at the right spot. Can you please do that for me? And he said, uh, do you think this is it? I go, yeah. It's, and I knew it wasn't. And I go, yes. He goes, okay. So he goes over there with, with all the bravado and, and false confidence in the world, but to him, it's real. <laughs> and he goes, this is the tree. I know it's right here. And I watch the camera show, film him, show him, and then pan over to where the tree was to make him look like an idiot. And I, and I could have taken all the glory for myself and go, Hey, Sean, the tree's right here. And I come there, I was like, Sean, go do the same thing right over there. So, so I'm not that big a bad guy because I, I could have stolen his glory, which I mean was there for the taking. And so Sean went and did it again. And, and you know, it was confirmed that was the spot. But, you know, and that's the thing producers, if they, and this is my thought as I watch, producers, if they like someone, they could have that cameraman follow that person all day and, and try to, almost help them right i mean is it am i wrong about that 
to, it to get it to get in or, or to just to sort of massage the story and make this. I'm sure in my head the producers are back going. You know who really needs an idol? Let's you know. Let's get this person out there. Am I wrong? No, I mean, I think I'm 41. They're throwing idols at people's feet, and Ben, you know, Ben, who served our nation's military. If only he'd mentioned it on the show. Um, you know, I, they, they, you know, hid them underneath where he sleeps at night. I mean, it was ridiculous. So, but, uh, but no, like Russell would do the "I know it's right here," and then just watch, watch the camera, you know, you know, make him look stupid. And he's just like, "Y'all think y'all making me look stupid, but I just made y'all look stupid because I just found it." So, you know. What was it? Just your experience out there for those 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 days. What and, and what was what what made you want to do it? I mean, did, did you love the show? And was it like, hey, I want to? No, I had never seen the show. Yeah. Did yeah. you want to? No, I, I, I was living in L.A. and they 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 uh, they saw me at a gas station. So no, I had never I had never. Seen, I, well, I take that back. I watched like two minutes of the first finale. I was like, these people are idiots. I would never do this. So what, what caused you to do it? What, the money, the fame, the yeah, fortune? Well, well I, so I'm at, a, I'm at a gas station. This woman locks up the brakes. It, it ended up being the head of casting. She goes, uh, you mind if I ask you a crazy question? I'm like, you're hot. Why not? She goes, you ever watch Survivor? I go, no, they're a bunch of losers. She goes, I'm the casting director. I go, that sucks for you. She goes, I'm offering you a one in 16 chance of a million dollars. I'm like, whatever. She goes, I think you'd be perfect. I go, tell me something I don't know, honey. She goes, that's it. You're on. That was, that was it. it. Come on. That was it. What are promises like? Yeah. Wicker furniture and fat women easily broken <laughs> by Johnny Fairfly. <laughs> um, just tell me a little bit about production out there, though, because you guys really are on a camp, right? I mean, that. how often are cameras around at all times, or is there a point all where... The, all times. I mean, just, just a ridiculous... I mean, like, at most times, there's usually a producer, assistant producer... Two to three sound guys, four to five cameras. When you're at a challenge, there's a, there's usually a couple hundred people at a challenge. So, a lot of which hidden, but there's 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 at least a, a couple hundred people. It's pretty ridiculous and 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 overwhelming for a lot of people. So I mean, the, you know, if you go back and watch Pro Islands, I wasn't really. I mean, my con- I did my dirty work in my confessionals. And and I and and I knew that I could. So like the only person telling you that they telling you the viewer that they hated me was me, and the only person telling you that we loved Rupert was Rupert. We hated Rupert. He had zero social skills. You know, whereas me prior to Survivor, I'd been Rowdy Roddy Piper's personal assistant for a year and and living in Los Angeles and meeting all these celebrities at at the cool clubs. So for you know, I was people's television. You know, like every day, like I would just tell stories and people were just like, I don't know if he's lying or not, but at least he's entertaining. And it's just like, you know, I, I don't feel like the stories I was, I was telling were, were that grandiose. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, you, if you live in Los Angeles, you go to the cool club, you're going to see some cool people and you're going to do some cool stuff. So, so, you know, that was, that's just every day in Los Angeles, if you get in the right, you know, circles so whereas like Sandra, for instance, you know, like day one, she was like, this one time I was on the way to the prom and someone opened their car door and I hit their car door and I just kept going. And I'm like, okay, cool story. Day two, this one time I was on the way to the prom and I was just like, okay. And then day three, this one time I was like, holy moly. So nothing has happened in your entire life. <laughs> and she goes, no, no, no. This one time I was on the way to the prom. I'm like, yeah. Why was she so good at this? I didn't understand how she, she wasn't. Okay, it's just other people are bad. I, I never understood because she, what she won, and then she went back for All Stars. I think she won again. She's a two time winner, right? And then yeah. it's my cool. mom says she's the greatest player ever, and that she's immensely better than me. But I mean, I she does nothing. She 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 will finish last place in every challenge. She doesn't really talk to people. She just sits there. So she has no allies, you know, she's the queen of as long as it's not me because she's not in an alliance because no one's talking to her. Like, not only are they not working with her, they're not talking to her. So someone like that, it's just like, there's no target because it's just like, oh, there's a, for someone like me, I'm not going to waste my shot on a Sandra when there's a Rupert or a Burton out there. Like, that's where my bullet's going. 
I mean, I can take out Sandra when it, at any given time. If, if, if any vote, if I had said the word Sandra, it would have been six zero, five zero for however many people that were there. She would not have got one vote to save her at any point in the game. It was easy. Low hanging, low hanging fruit. Whereas a Rupert or a Burton is just like, okay, let's put on the bulletproof vest. <laughs> let's have a couple throwing stars just in case. Shotguns loaded. This, 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 this is a big kill. So, and I'm only going for big kills. I'm not there. I, any, I can go in my backyard and, and, and shoot a doe. I'm looking for a buck. I want as many points on, on, on that antler as possible. It's, it's funny, uh, and again, I don't understand how she, you just kind of explained to me that you're because that's when I watched her. I'm like, she's not really doing anything. You nothing. didn't, you didn't watch nothing. Yeah, you Beyond said nothing. You, you said you know you got picked up at a gas station and, and we're on Survivor. So I'm assuming it's crazy to you that after all of that, now it's what you're known for. I mean, can are, are you kind of? I mean, it's been 20 years, but still surprised and shocked that. One day you're pumping gas, and then you're now. St- I wasn't pumping gas. Oh. I was with I was with a chick. She was pumping gas. Okay, watching was, someone I was, pump. I, I was on the corner. Oh, okay, but but just being in that in that vicinity and not knowing the not really liking the show, and then now it's your identity. I hated the show. I hated it. I liked Real World. That was that was my jam. I li- I like drama. So you know. So I you know I as soon as I was cast, I went on eBay. I ordered every episode on VHS and every early show interview in which they explained why they were voted out. And so um, I I watched every season twice. Um, I went down to Catalina. I became skin diver and scuba diver certified before I left. Uh, I was doing Runyon Canyon. I think three times a day. I had gotten down. I'd, I think it was down to 116 pounds because, like, I was eating Pink's hot dogs every day. I was eating McDonald's. I was doing the metric shakes. I was drinking Guinness. I was doing everything I could to, to gain weight, but I was doing Runyon Canyon to be in shape before it. So I was, I was 116 pounds because my, you know, 30 years old, high metabolism, you know, it was what it was. So, but, uh, um, every, every few days I'd get a call from, from, uh, from casting. And they're like, uh, are you watching? I'm like, yeah. They're like, have you got to Boston Rob yet? I'm like, no. They're like, let us know when you get to Boston Rob. That's kind of, that's what we're looking for. And I'm like, okay. So anyways, I'm they're like, you at Boston Rob yet? I'm like, no, not yet. So I finally get to Boston Rob. They're like, what do you think? I'm like, that dude didn't even make the jury. He sucks. <laughs> I was like, but he did get his own commercial. I want my own commercial. And they're like, if you can do half of what Boston Rob did, you'll get your own commercial. I'm like, all right. So then... When I did uh, uh, when I did the day Grandma lie, I got the little Johnny doesn't play fair, and it made me so happy. I, like I, it was only one of two people in the history of the show that had gotten their own commercial, uh, which you know, out of seven seasons and however many millions of viewers, it's pretty. I thought pretty amazing. No, oh, so. I love it. Um, who who wins this year? Do you have a winner? Do you know who wins? Do you feel have a, a good oh, feel? No, 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 no. That, yeah. That's the thing. Everyone thinks I get spoilers, and I could, but I, I don't. It doesn't help my pot. My podcast is good if Johnny Fairplay's an idiot. If Johnny Fairplay goes, I, I mean, my two picks this year were, or I think I had three, did I have, I think I had three picks, right? I take it back. I had two female picks, two male picks. So my two male picks were Ricard and Dr. Death and Ricard because, uh, uh, I, I, I think he's good looking. <laughs> <laughs> he 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 has a villainous vibe, and then Doctor Death Boche, who was what the second person voted out, and then my female picks were Evie and Shan. So right now, my, you know, but but it, I I don't like people love watching the podcast, watching me eat my words. You know, if 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 I know other people that do podcasts that get spoilers and, you know, they just talk each week about how smart they are, how they figured it out. And I'm just like, go F yourself. What's the um, fun of, what's the fun of watching the show? And then if you know, it, it, there's no fun. I mean, why would well, you? No, but they, they want people to watch and see how brilliant they are. Right, well. And it's just like, but you're not. So, I mean, uh, it's, I, I think it's disgusting to be honest with you. I mean, like you, Maybe some of them get, I mean, but do, do they really get lucky every season? No, of course not. They're liars. So no, I'd like I, the fun for me is, you know, my, my winner pick, if I were to only pick one being the first boot, it's just like, oh, well, I mean, you know, that's, 
it, I, I, I can accept the fact that I was wrong. I've been wrong about a lot of things, you know, I, you know, look under the skirt. Whoops. I, I guessed wrong. <laughs> it happens. Well, don't, don't tell us about it. But I think it's, it's, it doesn't end the evening. <laughs> you do you. You do you, Johnny. I always find it. It's like for me, I don't even want to know. I don't even want to have it guess. I just rather watch and see how these people play, and then get to this point, and then say, "Yeah, Shan plays a pretty good game. She's fun to watch." And like you said, Ricard's really under the radar. Seems to work his way. Uh, did you watch Big Brother at all? Because I was curious when they they gave us a small cookout. I don't know if you know the cookout thing, but I'm, 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 I've sold a lot of the shirts at JohnnyFairPlay.com, but yeah. I never saw an episode. I, but I did follow along the entire. So I, uh, my, my podcast network, Reality NSFW, uh, the, you, you can go to RealityNSFW.com and catch all the audio stuff. If you want to check the video stuff, it's at YouTube.com slash RealityNSFW. And I have uh, Brent Walgamot. Um, he was on. Did you ever see The Staircase on Netflix? I did. Yeah. You know, with the doctor that that. That killed his wife, <laughs> not allegedly, but that killed his wife. All right, so they uh, halfway through the the docu series, they they had the the male escort Brent. It was just like he's gay. <laughs> so anyway, that 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 is my uh, 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 that is my podcaster for my coverage of Big Brother on, on my network. And so I uh, I don't really like Big Brother. It's just too too long. I mean, three episodes a week is too much. Uh, it's it's just too much. So I will watch Celebrity Big Brother because it's it's truncated. And apparently, Boston Rob's going to be there. So cannot wait to scream at my television. Yeah. Actually, I tweeted Johnny Bananas because that's another rumored person. I'm like, please send home Boston Rob. I'm begging you. Like I'm a survivor. You think we'd be friends? We're not the guys of scumbags anymore. So anyway. <laughs> But but uh, I I did not watch a second of Big Brother. However, I listen to the podcast about Big Brother every week from Brent Walgamot because he could do a podcast about paint drying and it'd be the greatest podcast each and every week because he would just scream at the paint. (laughs) Well, Survivor... I'm very familiar with the cookout. Yeah, and they sort of hinted at it for like two seconds and now they're fighting with each other. So it it looks like... it, It felt like a nice little teaser as if that was like one small conversation just to, Hey, look, we're going to do what big brother did. Cause I, I assume oh, they had to the be camp out. They're the camp out on, uh, on, on survivor. Oh, they actually are. Okay. There is that, that they're still together. I didn't even think they were still together as a, as a alliance. They're, I mean, they're bare. Uh, they, they made it through two votes together. I, I, I think tonight we'll finally see the splinter of the camp out, but yeah. So, so big brother was the cookout, but since we're, we're on an Island and, and, and you know, it's the camp out. What, and you're doing something fun in Nashville this uh, coming, I guess, if you're watching this Monday, the 29th, when this drops, you'll be doing something December on December 1st. Yeah, tell us a little yes. bit about what you got going on. And you can follow him. Uh, you guys follow Johnny on Twitter. He gives he gives this information out. Gave it right out yeah. right before this uh, show. But tell us a little bit about what's going on. Sure. So, uh, so I do sl- survivor viewing parties all over the country. Uh, this season, I started in Louisville at a uh, Play Louisville. It was it was awesome. I had I had uh, Mike Bucci. He was a Hollywood supernova. The BWO was there. Brett Walgamont was there. Uh, Matt Bischoff, uh, uh, Sash from uh, Nicaragua. Who I feel like there was somebody else. Anyway, it was super awesome time. And then um, I was in Durham, North Carolina. Um, I uh, Zane Knight was supposed to be there. Zane. Late, Urgh, very angry. But uh, anyway, uh, Durham was a lot of fun. A couple weeks ago, I was in Worcester, Massachusetts uh, at uh, Rascals. My buddy Frank uh, owns Rascals. He's on that show, Shot of Love, or no, no Shot of Love. Uh, uh, he's on the show, uh, the, the 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 Battle of the Cover Bands. That's right. And uh, he's in a he's in a group called Shot of Poison, <laughs> and he is Fret Michaels, the lead singer of Shot of Poison. <laughs> I knew there was a shot involved there. So anyway, so at that one, um, uh, lunch lady Denise was there and uh, Brett from Millennials vs. Gen X, the cop. And uh, that was a lot of fun. But December 1st, I am returning to Nashville. Last time I was at Zany's. This time I am at the Doghouse Saloon in Nashville, Tennessee, and at the Premier Lounge, which is one of the largest video screens at a bar in the United States, which I think is pretty freaking cool. And so you can watch Survivor with me and Surprise Castaways. Should, should, I, spoil, should I spoil at least one of the surprises? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. I got I got Figgy from Millennials vs. Gen X. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. She's hot. Yeah. She's ridiculously hot. She, she's a Wilhelmina model. I don't know 
So anyway, so uh, go to SurvivorTix.com. That's SurvivorTix.com. And join me in Nashville. So uh, we have VIP packages. You get a meet and greet. You get a Survivor buff. Uh, you get uh, autographed pictures. And then we have general mission. I do trivia throughout uh, every commercial break. I give out autographed uh, pictures from lots of Survivors, including Ricard. There you go. There's an <laughs> autographed Ricard pic. And uh, it's so much fun. Uh, so go to SurvivorTix.com, SurvivorTix.com. This Wednesday, December 1st in Nashville, the Doghouse Saloon. Awesome. And of course, check your uh, podcast out, realitynsfw.com. You can find it there. And then we're podcast there. I had to ask one last question about your wrestling career. I'm a huge grappling fan, uh, TNA back in the day. Were you always going to be a manager or did you want to be sort of a, a, a kind of one of those uh, crash holly little guys? It was kind of a oh, kind of a pain in the ass. Who, what, were, what were your aspirations in wrestling? Were, I, I, could, I could always see you kind of being that, that mean, nasty heel manager. But what were your aspirations back in the day? Well, back, I mean, when when I was in high school, I wrote a letter to Ivan Koloff, who had a wrestling school in Charlotte, and or maybe it's actually Shalote, North Carolina. Uh, anyway, I, I still had a letter somewhere, but he, he hand wrote me back, and I got there just like you know, I, I think at the time I was like five three, a hundred pounds or something. I was like, I really want to be a wrestler, and uh, I was like, but I don't think I'm big enough. But can I be a wrestler? And he goes. It doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are. I can make you a wrestler. Just send twenty five hundred dollars to this address. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, I can be a wrestler." Did you hear that? I just have to send twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> it doesn't matter how big I am. You too may be a winner if you. <laughs> yes. So uh, no, I mean my uh, my heroes growing up, you know, of course, were Ric Flair and Roddy Piper, but I, I also loved uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan and, and the Mouth of Cell Jimmy Hart. I, I, st- I, I still get a call from uh, the Mouth of Cell Jimmy Hart on, on on your bigger holidays. He usually gives me a call, which is pretty cool. And his birthday is is uh, January first, so uh, so uh, soon uh, soon approaching. Happy birthday, hey Johnny! It's me, Jimmy Hart. I know. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, so no, it, it's, uh, that was, that was always a dream. So when I, uh, after I did survivor, I got an offer from WB and I got an offer from TNA and TNA offered me two years, $300,000 with insurance and cell phone and, and five-star hotel and all this stuff to and wrestle or to be a manager. Was it so I talked with Jeff Jarrett before I signed my deal, and I was just like, so who am I managing? And he was just like, you're not managing anybody. He goes, you're just the biggest bad guy here. And I was like, I thought that was your gig. He goes, no, 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 not if you're here. And I'm like, mm, okay. And I was like, but I don't wrestle. He goes, you don't need to wrestle. And I was like, so what am I doing? He goes, oh, we'll figure it out. It's going to be great. And he goes, and I was like, uh. And I was like, I was like, well, I don't like to bump. <laughs> and he was just like, you take one bump a year. Your first bump won't be for six months. You have creative control over your character, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, all right, well, that sounds good. So anyway, so I get there the first day and they're like, you're not going to believe this. Access Hollywood's here. Inside Edition's here. Entertainment Tonight's here. You need to take a bump, brother. <laughs> I was like, I thought I wasn't taking a bump for six months. <laughs> and so I ended up taking a spinning power bomb from AJ Styles. Uh, he purposely stiffed me, concussed me. Uh, we're cool. We're more than cool. The guy's given me so many free tickets over the years. And, uh, and, and he kind of had to stiff me and concuss me because like my, uh, my contract had leaked out the day before I got there. So the entire locker room hated my guts and he was the first guy that had the opportunity to get his hands on me. So, you know, could have been worse. It's a scary, it's a scary situation though. And <laughs> I'm sure it's yes, sh- yes, shaking yes, a little bit much. that night when you know that's going to happen. Yeah. So in the, the week two, I, uh, Brian Urlacher, uh, the Chicago Bears, threw me up the top rope to the floor, um, and I won an SP for best non sports sports moment. So Brian's holding the SP. I, I said it was cool. Uh. <laughs> Keep in touch with these guys. I mean, you said AJ's getting you free tickets. TNA was pretty. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see AJ. Uh, well, when this airs, I will have seen AJ Friday night in Greensboro SmackDown. So uh, no, is AJ? No, AJ's on the Raw thing. I'll be seeing. Sorry, I'm going to be seeing Jeff Hardy. Of uh, uh, Friday uh, after SmackDown, so uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm 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 in friends, with, I'm friends and stay in contact with a lot of these guys. I mean, I uh, I love wrestling. It's it's you know probably my 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 first love. Uh, you know, I 
you know, being Rowdy Roddy Piper's personal assistant before Survivor was like just one of the coolest things in the world. He was crazy and every day was crazy. And, you know, and you're working with your hero. And what, then, give me, how did that happen? Well, you, you guys, you said you were doing club and doing a lot of clubbing back in those days and ran into him there. Right. But then what, what is it? No, 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 I didn't okay. run into him there. Uh, so Roddy was living in Portland. I had lived in Portland. I had moved to LA and Roddy had been living in Portland and was moving back to LA to do a bunch of straight to DVD movies. And the assistant that he had got a DUI and couldn't drive. So Roddy is like, you're worthless. Find me an assistant to replace you. And he goes, Oh, my friend. Uh, and, and this was smart Bart Sawyer who uh, smart Bart Sawyer was in USWA uh, wrestling back in the day. He was USWA tag team champions with uh, this kid flex Cavana. Uh, he'll never draw a dime. Uh, as long as he lives, uh, Flex went on to become The Rock. Um, but <laughs> so, I knew I knew that name. I was yeah. So, but uh, Smart Bart called me. He's just like, "Hey, Roddy needs an assistant. I lost my license. Do you want the gig?" And so I became Roddy Roddy Piper's personal assistant. No, oh, I'm I'm so sad. I used to actually have his number, and I would call because I was doing documentary work as a producer. Sure. Uh, I was doing a St. Louis wrestling documentary, and I talked to him on the phone probably three or four times, we, and we never got the documentary done, but he was all up for just telling me stories on the phone. And I was like, this oh, is yeah. – so I had Flair's number, like just calling these guys just to set the stuff up. And as you know, these guys love to talk. There's no – you... They love to talk. I, I, I always had the – I always envisioned doing a, a, like a – like a doc – like a you – know, did you ever see my Breakfast with Blassie with Andy Kaufman yeah. and, and – yeah, I always wanted to do my picnic with Piper, with, with me and Roddy, and uh, I ran out of time. Are you still in the real estate business, or are we podcast? I'm not. I, I, time I, podcast. I, I retired, uh, I don't know, uh, two months ago. I'm a full-time podcast. I, I, I got fired from being a realtor. So I posted it. So I do real. I, I was doing realtor stuff. Yeah, and, hold uh, on, aren't realtors kind of self-employed? <laughs> That's... Well, yes, but but I, I was I was doing a lot of property management stuff. Uh, I, I managed five hundred and fifty properties, uh, five hundred and fifty rental properties, and um, I had uh, I'd got my hair cut and colored, and I I I, I posted a picture and it said, "Thanks, Terry." Uh, for for hooking up the hair, the roots were hollering trailer park, and the next day I got I got a, a call from my boss, and it was just like, uh, uh, take down that post immediately, and I'm just like, what what did I post? I'm just like, I don't it, it, <laughs> like I don't <laughs> like I don't I don't think I post anything bad. It was like the trailer park thing, and I was just like, oh, what about it? And she's like, you work in rental property management, and I was just like, well, number one, we don't manage that many trailers, and number two. I think they call it trailer. I think it's okay. <laughs> and she was like, uh, it's not take it down. And I was like, okay. So I took it down. I didn't, you know, I didn't think twice about it. And then 10 minutes later, I got an email. It's like, you know, with heavy heart based on your unprofessional, uh, unprofessionalism, we have to let you go. And I'm like, for reals. So anyway, so everyone's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm not, I'm like, I was losing money doing this. <laughs> I'm like, I get to be on the road is, is every Wednesday that, that I want now. Like, as I said, Worcester, Massachusetts, Nashville, Tennessee, December 15th, I'm going to be in Cincinnati. Like I would much rather be watching survivor at a brewery <laughs> than, than, than showing, you know, $300 a month rental property. <laughs> so, so yeah, life, everything works out for a reason. I've never, I've been doing the, the, the realtor stuff for six years and, uh, I'm actually, as soon as we're done with this podcast, I'm taking off my realtor tags off my car and putting up my Virginia tech Hokie tags. I'm beyond excited. Well, it's a very interesting life. I enjoyed this. Uh, you can follow Johnny Fairplay on Twitter. Just look up Johnny Fairplay Twitter. You'll find him. Um, he's an original OG. Maybe he's going to be on the challenge all-star someday, but who knows? No, no, no. No challenge. Everyone asks me, am I going to do it? I'm five foot eight, 150 pounds. I am never doing the challenge. Uh, I can't. They'll kill me. Like I, we, we did, we did the, uh, the challenge all stars podcast. I think it was the challenge all stars podcast Monday. I don't think there's a female I can beat in a hall brawl. <laughs> Big T I think has my number. 
I love that it stuck around. I didn't, I just can't believe that these guys and that you got guys like Bananas and CT who just made a living off it. It's I'm a good for tip your hat. That's what I say. Yeah, no, I love it and I respect them. But yeah, but like I, I get uh, every at least once a week, someone's just like, "When are you doing the challenge?" It's like never. Anything? Just, Is there anything that would bring you out of a reality TV tire, retirement? I mean, I'm uh, January. I'm on ABC primetime. Okay. So Judge Judge uh, Judge Steve Harvey show I filmed that last week, and then I got uh, I got a couple other things in the like right now we're just waiting for the the final edit. I did a a true crime missing persons thing with Tawana from Pro Islands. So and we're talking with uh, Netflix, Amazon, and um, Discovery Plus. So uh, so yeah so no there's play, I mean I'm I'm far from bored man I mean like like I, you. You've been hitting me up for for four months, and it took me four months to carve out thirty minutes. Well, I, and I appreciate it because today was. <laughs> so, and t- I, I appreciate your 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 uh, your dedication to, to, and, and follow up. And I and I apologize, but I, you know I don't I, I don't I, you know I do like eight podcasts a week. You know with, with my stuff, and uh, you know to. You know, everyone's just like, well, you do eight podcasts, you know, how many hours? There's 24 hours a day. I'm just like, yeah, but I got to watch the show. I take notes. You know, sometimes I like to enjoy a show. So I'll go back and watch it again without taking notes to actually enjoy the, you know, the, the, the medium of, of television that I, that, that I like. So, so, and then, you know, I have, I have a 13 year old and a four year old. Sounds like, I mean, again, you're doing, I, I think, first of all, that podcast is not easy. And if anyone's doing them well, they're clearly being done by, it's a, it's a full-time job. Conrad over yeah. doing his wrestling ones. I really enjoy his stuff. Everybody that's doing one, I'm always like, Hey, that's, this is not, you'll see that the people, Hey, I have a new podcast and they're, they're done in six months. Oh, so, um, uh, it's so funny. People, people ask me for, for podcast advice and I go, uh, make a hundred podcasts. A hundred. And soon as you finish your hundredth one, Publish. for one hundred and one, give me a call. And for one through one through one hundred, press delete <laughs> because it's garbage. I promise you. And I'm not even sure if one hundred and one is going to be good. <laughs> but, but please delete one through a hundred. I think this is one hundred and two. So I think I finally oh, mastered sweet. this. Congrats! I'm glad. I, I, see, I'm glad I drug my feet performance. That was so smart on my part. No, I do. I thank you for, for doing And again, Twitter, you can find anything else. We mentioned everything, I think. I've really enjoyed well, this. So uh, I do I do cameos. Go to oh. cameo.com slash Johnny Fairplay. Once again, no H in Johnny. So just J-O-N-N-Y, Johnny Fairplay. Uh, you get T-shirts at johnnyfairplay.com. With every T-shirt purchase, you get a phone call from me, Johnny Fairplay. If it doesn't end up in my spam folder, sorry, I can't help that. I'm never like... Right here, everyone's just like, dude, you go check your spam. No, I don't. Okay, so here's my mailbox on here. I don't know if you can see it. I did? 262,290 unread emails. I didn't see that, but hold that up. Let's see. I, I, I just This will give me agita just looking at that. Where's your mailbox? Oh, up top there on the left? Yeah. Far, yeah oh, God, that's a lot. Kind of fuzzy. But anyway, yeah, 262,290. Okay, so that's just regular. That's not spam. That's just regular stuff. So if if I'm not seeing it, like I'm checking there, but if it goes to spam, it's just like I'm sorry. So so don't blame me. So, but if you do order a T-shirt and you don't get a phone call, just shoot me a message on. I mean, I'm at Johnny Fairplay, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just say hey, I got a shirt. Can you give me a call? Yes, just you know, send a screenshot of your your purchase, whatever. So and then um, become a patron, ad free NSFW.com. My co-host Matt Bischoff, he had the big long beard that that almost went to the ground from Survivor Care Moen. If we get 200 patrons, I think we're at like 100 and some now. We get 200 patrons at any time. Like even if it's for one minute, we get 200 patrons. I will get a tattoo of Matt Bischoff on me. So if you hate me, just become a patron just so because I'll post a video. I'm scared of needles. I will cry. I will scream. I, it, it's beyond pathetic. So become a patron um, at adfreenSFW.com. Plus there's good content. We have game night and all this other stuff. You're added to the secret Facebook group. And then, um, yeah, the subscribe to the free stuff, youtube.com slash reality and SFW. And I think that's every, oh, get tickets. Come see me in Nashville. Uh, SurvivorTix.com, that's SurvivorTix.com. Join me in Nashville December 1st. And then tickets will be on sale uh, next week, probably by the time you hear this. Uh, 
for the finale, I will be in Cincinnati. Uh, tickets will be available at SurvivorAfterHours.com. Awesome. Well, I think we, I think we covered it all. I think I think Johnny so much he's out of breath. You, you know, again, I appreciate you uh, kind of you know letting me bombard your mailbox. And uh, today we just got this together, so I appreciate it. So thank you, and I thank you for watching. Here's the pitch here with your friend Brad again, sponsored by Masses Restaurants, five locations in St. Louis. STLMasses.com. We'll see you next time. <laughs>